that's when it really comes to the effect that you need to work with your fellow musicians. Uh, like was mentioned before, if you are a certain style and you're honest with that style and you present that style correctly and, and you're, you're recording music that sounds true to your form, it's easy to go on MySpace and all these other networking sites now and find a million other bands that want to come down here. Um, and there, there are bands, for example, from DC that are really big fans of ours, I didn't even know it. And uh, they contacted us asking, hey, if you're on tour, do you want to play up here? And can you help us out when we come back down? So far, you know, the offer still stands for them, and we were treated very well. Uh, we got paid very well. We were in local media because those guys were trying to help us out because we were going all the way up there. Um, and without their help, it would have been much more difficult. It would have been flying blindly. Who knows if we would have been playing a good club or with good bands we were even liked or were friends with. So at this point, um, th things have even changed since the first time I started booking tours, like six, seven years ago. I mean, the first tour I booked, I realized that you know, they didn't want to talk to the band most of the time, so I had to make an alter ego where I was my own management firm and uh, a different email and basically booked a tour all the way up the East Coast to uh, New Hampshire and back. And um, I just want to point out that that's the second time we've heard that thing. Yeah. I, just want to, just, um, I don't do that anymore. <coughs> I don't think. Uh, but I learned my lesson in that one because you know, people, oh yeah, sure, we'll, we'll book the band. They sound all right, why not? But they threw us on bad time slots with horrible acts, often which would be completely different than when we were initially booked with by the time we showed up in like New Hampshire. Completely different bands than we were supposed to play with. And in reality, we came back with nothing but an enormous gasoline bill and a handful of CDs sold. We made a few friends here and there, but um, there was no reason for the promoters, for the managers, for the booking agents, for the club owners, or even the bands that had no idea who we were, they just got thrown on some bill with us to help us or to be involved with us. And then from that point, you're really shooting in the dark and you're aiming for luck. And nowadays, it doesn't have to go that way. I mean, there's people in every city that you can get a hold of via MySpace, Facebook, other things in advance to help you out. And other bands that if you're like-minded with them and you can find ones that are hardworking and want to have a similar scope to you, they are willing to help you out with a place to stay, with a good club to play at. Um, and a lot of times, you know, with the promise that, hey, I'll split the bill with you when you get back here and give you half the cut of the door. Uh, they'll do the same with you there and therefore you don't starve to death. And, and usually if they're at the point where they want to get on the road too, they already have local contacts in media like you might have in your hometown. And that, and that helps too. Back to the traditional marketing. I mean, do we have any advice for, okay, there's a really good band, uh, I'm in a really great band, we write really great songs, we've got a really tight live show. Uh, nobody's interested in uh, promoting the band, and uh, nobody's interested in contacting and contacting media to um, market it within the community. Any advice uh, to a band that is in that uh, position? Get over it. <laughs> Get over it. It's not worth it. And nobody's going to work as hard for your band like you are. So if you're expecting somebody else, like a label or a management company or a creative loafing, to make it happen for you. Sorry, Jack, you're gonna have it. Um, and you can try for years and years and years and think you, think you deserve something and you won't get anything. You don't deserve anything. As a musician, all you deserve is hard work and all you have to offer is your product. Um, marketing is pretty straightforward. You've gotta tell people what it is that you think they'll want to hear so they can check out your band. But you have to be honest about it. Yeah, I'm saying, well, yeah, obviously, the brand, the trust factor is implied there. I'm assuming, I'm hoping that you're not gonna be like, yeah, we sound like, we sound like this band and totally sound different. I mean, that wouldn't do you any good. But um, when you just you know read up on some marketing, what works for other people. There's a lot of good books out there. Uh, uh, there's a book by David Muirman Scott. I think it's called uh, New Rules of PR and Marketing. Really good book to get started on how to really push a lot of content from a promotional side and PR side that you can do on your own just by kind of following a couple of the basic rules of promotions. Uh, there's a, also a, a book called The Brand Gap. It's a really cool book that'll help you define a lot of what your brand should and shouldn't be. And it's, it gives an interesting business viewpoint on how to develop a brand. And, and I read it and I, it was very applicable to bands. So I recommend that. Just do your homework on basic marketing things and also set up a system or some kind of mechanism that you can measure what you're doing. Um, whether it's number of people that come out to your show, whether it's number of hits on your website, whatever the case may be, set up some kind of goal and benchmarking system so that you can actually see your progress. Because you can you can play gigs aimlessly and not know what's going on and you think you're spinning your wheels and nothing's happening. Um, if you can say, well, hey, last gig we had 40 people and the gig after that we had 45 and then we had 30. Okay, what happened? Maybe we didn't promote enough, you know. 
Tommy didn't do the Twitter thing he was supposed to, whatever the case may be, but you know, set up some goals and milestones and that definitely helps. And divide up the labor. Everybody needs to work inside the band. I don't care if there's just always one guy in the band that usually carries the load, but everybody needs to contribute something. So, you know, we gotta work hard and spread the word, honestly. I have a question for everybody. How, how much is too much in terms of playing out locally? Because I, I always hear different theories on this. Um, is, can, a, can a musician play too <coughs> often in their own hometown? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Um, all the time. <laughs> Very much. Yeah. I wouldn't say there's there's two there's there's an excess. You could, you, if you play if you play different spots and you play different, especially here, like I said earlier, there's Dunedin. There's all these little cities and spots and venues and all these little areas that we have around our community that you can play and play often. You know, if you're playing in, in the same area over and over again, then it, then it becomes saturated. You know, and you're spinning wheels at that point. One thing that I want to touch about, and I don't need to stray, but I know we've talked about Twitter and MySpace and Facebook and all these different like disconnected from fans situations. And I think something that's really key, you know, is part of my role as being a promoter is because of Fans aren't really going out and, and hungry enough to do their own legwork. I mean, you have to go out and go and support other shows and actually face to face meet people. You know, you know, have already met with Jorn or everyone on this panel because we're all out and out and you know doing these things on a daily, you know, it's not a weekly grind of being out there. And if you go out there and meet these people and shake hands and have the networking abilities to go up to someone and, and say, listen, I know you're doing this, that, and third. I want to be involved, meet people, and and really become part of you know whatever the scene is, I think that's really important. And to just jump back a little bit to what you were saying as far as touring too much, um, primarily what we, what we see recently is, you know, play once a month, play once a month in your own hometown and get on that road if you can and, and, and leave your own hometown and leave your comfort zone a little bit if you can. If not, you know, once a month is kind of like a general rule. Yeah, any more than that, you start to notice your draw. If you get a point where you have a draw, um, and uh, you know, say, that, say that you know, just by yourself, you draw 150 people in general. If you're on a great bill, you might draw 300 people. Um, and you play more than once a month, you'll start noticing that taper off. It, the, the concept nowadays, people, it's hard for people just to want to go see a band just for the heck of it. Um, if it's an event, people are more likely to be involved. Uh, I think everybody here has been involved in things that have been events at one point or another that we either put on together or not with other people. And, and those tend to be very successful. Um, and not only because you have so many people involved that everybody's pride is on the line, their promotional skills are on the line, and then, you know, the media gets hit from a bunch of different angles, and, you know, as long as people are polite about it, usually the media will cover an event over just a band having a show, or somebody playing at a coffee shop or something like that. Um, being in, involved in something bigger than just a deal, uh, makes a huge difference as far as that goes. Um, but still, if, it's diminishing returns. If you're playing more than once a month, and you're not at the point, you're at the point where you're actually starting to draw people. It's going to taper off because they kind of start, people will start taking the show for granted um, in, in general. But yeah, that might not be true as a rule of thumb for somebody like a jazz band uh, or, you know, who wants to set up shop as a, as a house band at a restaurant or something. There's, there's really not a, a rule of, of, of playing too often. Uh, somebody like Uncle John's band, that's a great band, a tribute band that plays every Thursday at Stripper Smokehouse. You can't really tell them that they're playing too often because there's a bunch of hippies that are coming out on Thursday night and dancing their ass off. You can't tell them that it's not working because it is working. So depending on what you're trying to accomplish, it's going to define how often you play. I think also the genre of music that they're performing. For, for in a reggae band, there's all types of reggae nights. You know, there's very specific stuff you, know, you can play as much as people want you to play. So. Yeah, as long as you're getting paid to play. I mean, it, it, it comes down to would, would you uh, play every night of the week if you got paid to play to an empty room? Or would you consider that playing too long? You know, I mean, it's, it's kind of, it's your call. Are you playing? I think you can do it all the time. If you can still bring people out. Right? If you're playing gigs that uh, draw is not, an, not a, a requirement to have, then play as much as you want. If you need to refine your chops and work on your songs and you know, get over your stage fright or whatever the case may be. Play as much as you can until you start getting a fan base, and then your fans will will start kind of you'll start seeing what works. Maybe once a month works. Maybe every six weeks works. Maybe three months works. You know, it depends on what you're willing to do, what your fans are willing to pay for. You know, you know, every time like, a big band comes to town, they only come through once a year, maybe every once in a couple of years, and it's a big event. People will go to that. But 
they can catch you know the Bogos or Ascending to Avalon or Rise of Saturn every any weekend on any bar. They're, they're not really going to want to. You know, they're going to just we're just going to fade into the whole porridge of what's happening. So, just like porridge. Porridge. Huh. 